Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining. This is your host, Nino, and what you're seeing here is Knopix 9.1 running from a live DVD on my venerable ancient desktop, which some of you have come to know as my Windows XP machine, but XP is not harmed in this exercise, as this is really going to be focusing on a different hard disk. Right now, this is a famous Linux system running from DVD only. Knopix was indeed, I believe, one of the first, if not the first system in the very early 2000s, which allowed you to boot from a then CD. For normally, you would not be able to run a Linux system just like that without having installed it. Knopix made that possible. It was a really big thing at the time. And nowadays, of course, everybody is laughing about this and thinking, like, which, which Linux can't you try out live? But that is an old pioneer of the field. And here, viewer Seth suggested that. Seth, thank you very much for, for your proposal. That was actually something really interesting to try out. Because indeed, just as Seth had mentioned, this is chock full of programs. I mean, if if my criticism regarding the release candidate of Body Linux 7 was that it's an empty system, then this is the exact reverse of that. I mean, just look at the internet section. So we're having Chromium, but we're also having Firefox. Not only though, we're having also Conqueror and we're having Tor. Wow. <laughs> so four browsers actually we are having of course transmission but we are having even weird stuff like pidgin with which if you wanted to if you were so inclined you could even connect to the strangest things in the world if you were to find a server for them i mean we of course have to wait a bit as it is a live dvd system for for it to to do anything but Generally speaking, this is a Debian derivative, so I should be having access actually to the apt repositories, and therefore I should be able to install anything else that I might be missing. Though, let's be frank, it's not very likely that I would be missing anything. So we are having actually Wine. If, if I get hold of any Windows programs, I could use them. And you're having two terminals. You're having console and terminator. And yeah, here, welcome to Pidgin. Look at this. I, I love it. Aim. Wow. <laughs> uh, I mean, have you have you got any server where this would be running? And there's, of course, ICQ, which is right now looking sketchier than ever. <laughs> uh, so, so this is so cool. Like, I I'm sorry, Pidgin, but we're not going to do this. So this is Knopix 9.1. If you check Wikipedia, you will find information that there seems to be an elusive variant called 9.3, which is much more recent than 9.1, which is from two years ago. And, and Knopix 9.3 seems to be way more recent. But unfortunately, this seems to have only been published in a couple of German magazines. And sorry, that's not a way to publish an operating system. The terminal is white. Uh, pfft. It's a question of taste and I regard this as terrible. <laughs> but historically, you know, if you say terminals were at first essentially electric typewriters and, and teletypes connected somehow to computers, then, then having it actually black on white is historically more accurate. This other th thing with light on dark is only when they started to introduce CRTs in the world of terminals. But we are having apt, which apt this app. <laughs> so I, I would be able to install anything I want here. And well, essentially, if you would be having a lonesome system somewhere, which needs a Linux with a lot of packages coming just just like that prepackaged, like here the office suit, but also with Kyle which is actually a latte editor and so on and so forth, then really Knopix would be an impressive choice. Now, the question, though, is 
whether I will be able to install this. When booting, I pressed first F2 in order to get into the boot options and then saw that you need to boot not Knopix at the boot prompt, but Knopix64 in order to have a 64-bit kernel load. And now I will try to install it. And I think this was with install Knopix to flash disk. At least I don't see anything else that would be more fitting. And this last time I tried it didn't work. So while this is incredibly rich, uh, it is also a little bit trickier. And yeah, you have to you have to simply think logically when you are handling it. It, it, it is not overly difficult, but it is not also such a like eight to ten click system like the body Linux release candidate, which is just like next, 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 next install. So <laughs> let's see. I'm going to go now for install Knopix to flash disk. Last time there was an issue with it losing somehow connection to the hard drive. Let's see what that issue was. And now actually from when I tried to boot the Knopix DVD again on the damaged system, it told me, uh, unfortunately, there is a Knopix installation on the disk. We tried to boot it and it didn't work and it just dropped me to the prompt. There, however, I found DD and they nuked the first three gigabyte of the disk. So <laughs> hopefully not to have that issue again. And um, maybe it will be in the accessoires. Yeah, I'm trying now to get the installer up. But no, it's not there. No, but that's education. Haha. Ha. So what we definitely need to do is to turn off that extremely stupid screensaver because I have the feeling that this really put it to sleep eventually. Uh, and, and of course, I'm just not going to stay there, move the mouse and, and like show presence while it is installing things like that's extremely boring. So, oh, a DOS emulator. That's great. So I have both a Windows emulator and a DOS emulator. And you know, you're having Midnight Commander, but you're having also, ah, where was it? You're having another two pane file manager from KDE. It's essentially, it's a mix of KDE and everything else. Here, you are having MPV, like this, this media player, but you are also having proper VLC. So <laughs> you're having even Audacity prepacked and cheese and, and, and Kino and, and caffeine and, and K3B and Brasero. So it's like whatever you want, everything is there. So I just have to find now and turn off the screensaver. I called up the installer, unfortunately, it is freezing everything. But well, see you in a second when things come up. Well, that was unfortunately unimpressive. It crashed on me. And let's see. Oh yeah, here you have it. F2 when this appears. And then I'm saying Knopix 64. Okay. Well, let's return to where we were. Hey, that does you see the name of my graphics card. GeForce 7300. Yeah. Slowly, slowly at the starting, and we're pretty much back where we were. There we go, preferences screensaver. And 720 was the maximum I think this could be set to. Oh, please. It has very funky screen savers, really. Okay, file, um, restart demo. I don't know, just like swallow the new configuration, please. And so, again, we go back to where we were, which was Knopix. If it would be so kind. Oh, not sound and video. I'm clicking here Knopix. And it was install Knopix to flash disk. That was the weird part. It didn't actually have a straight install Knopix to hard disk option. It's, let us see whether it will be able to 
trigger that program now without crashing. I mean, for some reason, my processor um, usage is way up. I, I ask for an installation. I'm surprised that this is so tiresome. It makes cranking noises like a ship at sea. Waiting now for minutes for it to open this application. Maybe I should just go get an ice cream or something. So finally, at 45, and with uh, the processor usage decreasing, we are getting now this option to install Knopix and note there is installation only on removable flash devices. And then H is installation also on fixed hard disks. So despite the name, it is also allowing for a fixed hard disk, which we will use here, our like four and a half uh, hundred gigabyte disk. Yes. Do you want to create a minimal version of Knopix? No, I want a full version of Knopix. Installation of FAT with additional overlay partition. Okay. Installation of FAT32 with optional overlay file smaller than 4 gigabyte. No, I don't see why I should limit myself like that. And no overlay, read only like CD, DVD, which is totally stupid. So evidently it would have to be P. Okay, then enter. And would you like to remaster Knopix? All changes versus the original will be added as, new, as a new compressed image in the newly created copy. Warning, this includes present settings, blah, blah, blah. No, I don't need to remaster Knopix. I just want it as is. Repartition and format device. This is really funny because it warns you 10 times. So, <laughs> in binary though, of course. So, <clears throat> I say yes. Do you really want to do this? Are you sure? Yes, I am. Uh, please enter the size of the overlay partition. And last time, last time this didn't work. This is not very great. I would like to use my entire disk, but if I do that, Maybe there is something in its design which doesn't exactly handle very well 400 something gigabytes. So let's decrease this whole thing to some reasonable measure of, let's say, around 100 gigabyte. The rest I should be able to, you know, format from within Linux anyway. I don't think I will need more than that, but that should be idiot safe. Let's see. All right, and now the installation is apparently beginning. That last time, just before it failed, took an eternity. So I am going to put you on break again, so you do not have to wait through all of this. So now it's in the midst of writing data. It did that the last time too, just before it crashed. And I am curious how it will end up this time. So, unfortunately, it stopped copying and did exactly the same thing as last time. So this is the error message I get and then the system becomes unbootable. And frankly, if that's the situation, then Knopix is just not something I can recommend in good faith even now after reducing the size of the image to a novice to try and install on his or her hard disk. Seth, thank you very much for your proposal of Knopix. I can imagine that it works well on a USB stick, but it's not something for the hard disk. Like if after all of this time, this is what happens, I can't tell someone go ahead and try Knopix. And for that, 
Well, it contains an amazing software collection. Knopix is off the list. And the search continues. So, that was a wonderful proposal and a great experiment. And perhaps the next version of Knopix will fare better. But for now, we're leaving it at that. Thank you all for having watched today's video. I do hope you will agree, you will join in again sometime. Best as regular guests, which I would be very grateful for. Have till then a wonderful time. And from me, goodbye. Post dictum. That is what happens if you try to boot it afterwards.